What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, everybody? So we are back again for a whole new season of Love and Hip Hop, the original New York. Okay, this season nine, episode one, Arrested Development. So we got some new cast members on here. We got old cast members that came back, like Remy Ma, Papoose, and Gandhi, or whatever. Uh, I think Jonathan is back. Um, they got rid of that Anais. I'm, oh, you know, I've seen some recent pictures, uh, recent pictures of her and girl. Mm, no, moving on from that, and we got Sin, she's back, minus Erica, okay, bitch, they should have had Erica Mina on this, fuck her being up in uh, Atlanta, that would have been some shit, Sin back, um, Joe Budden back, we got Mano, uh, Jaquay, Jaquai, Jamiroquay, you know, he back, whatever, it is what it is, okay, so the episode starts off with Sin, and first of fucking all, let me just tell you this. When I seen the um trailer for this show, okay, I said who is doing the budget over there at Mona Me, okay? Because listen, that cinematography for what they did for the trailer, bitch. Y'all trying to be on movie star status? I said, look at this shit, bitch. Y'all really try to make hoes turn tune in and look and be like, this cute or whatever. It was cute. I said, look at this. This all high quality and shit like this. Okay, y'all went and got a new camera and everything. All right, y'all out with the old, in with the new. Okay, cool. Then you know we start the episode off and Joe Budden is sitting at a desk with the lights on him with his turtleneck. Okay, niggas still wear turtlenecks. All right, and he basically talking about how you know when you last saw um him he was this way he was narrating and now he's another way. Okay, they showed that part when he tried to propose to uh to Harry in New York and Times Square that didn't go right but then we see him back in Times Square again all jazzed the fuck up and shit with his boots on and all that stuff I said look at his little kitten heel booties I said look at that shit with his little sweater turtleneck on and his little fedora all right then we see Stan come through with the baby and they all a family and shit I said look at the comparing contrast that they, they doing up in here I said Mona you really trying to outdo yourself right now okay the budget bitch the budget is on deck, you know, and he up there sitting there like he really somebody at this desk. Then he wants to let us know that he the single most relevant voice in hip hop right about now. Okay, if that's what you want to say, that's what you want to say. You got to big yourself up because nobody else going to do it, you know. And so I was just like, you know, Joe, you better narrate. You better narrate, okay. You know, he still said he a grumpy ass bitch. You know, he is what it is. Um, You can't deny that. But <clears throat> this season probably may make me like Joe, okay. Because I have a love, dislike. I ain't even going to say a love, dislike. A like, dislike for him, okay. And so, you know, they get to talking. We see him and Sin, Sin on her little hammock outside by the pool. Joe just came back. Sin basically, you know, she not with Erica no more. You know, she didn't move the fuck up, okay? Talk about a come up, bitch. I said, look at that house. If that house is really there, look at that goddamn house. You can never tell with, um, you know, Mona Me Productions. You really can never tell, okay? I mean, nobody forgot when Ray J was going to his house and it still had the lockbox on there. Right. So, moving on from that... Um, you know, she just basically wanted him to come down. They had some little talks or whatever. She wanted some alone times with him. And then he goes up and get the baby. She was like, bitch, what the fuck was that? He was fine up there by himself. What up? I mean, I want some dick. Okay? She was like that girl that was on, um, Baby Boy that was trying to get the dick from, um, Yvette co-worker that was trying to get the dick from, um, you know, Jody. When I want you. And, 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 and Peanut, when I want some dick, I call you to get some dick. Okay? You know, shit like that. She was like, bitch, we ain't been fucking. Ever since we had the baby, we ain't been fucking. Okay? Let's go on a trip. Let's do this. I just want to get fucked. All right? She jumped in the pool. He like, I got to go because, you know, the baby don't need to hear this shit. I said, Joe... You better fuck that girl with the ass like that. You better fuck that girl. Ass and thighs like that girl. Fuck him. Fuck her. Before she go fuck somebody else. All right. Moving on from that. We get Safari coming meet a rich dollars in a piece of place. Of course, he got to be so extra and announce himself there. And then they meet up with Joe Budden. They talking about the whole thing that happened over there in Love and Hip Hop LA. About how, you know, the Lyrica and uh, A1 situation. Now, they asked him. 
Did you fuck her? Did you love her? Did you touch her? Did you kiss her? Did you rub on the boot? Did you do all this? Do you know how long it took you to say no, 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 no? Just like that. Did you touch it? No. Did you love it? No. Did you tiss it? No. Did you did, did, did you lick her? No. No. I said, so why when you was on Love and Hip Hop um, Hollywood, you couldn't just go ahead and say, no, you had to pause for dramatic effects? I just answered my own question. Okay. And so then, you know, uh, they talking about all of that. You should probably want to go perform out there in Dykeman. You know, it's this place, uh, like a basketball court or whatever. We seen the footage of what happened, okay? And Joe explained it to us. You know, you got to go out there and do some little hood songs and all this shit. Um, where you have a hood but a uh, single, you know, going through. He just ain't got no hood single right about now that's buzzing in the streets. So, he already knew that this shit wasn't going to go well. And I said, mm. We know that it wasn't going to do well either, and we saw the evidence of the proof that it didn't go well, okay? Because they booed the fuck out of his ass, all right? That's when he started talking about his jer- We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm pretty sure they're going to do that in the episode. But, you know, after that, we get to this whole thing with Joel Santana. Joel Santana, I, you know, Dipset? Is he still with Dipset? Okay, but whatever. Him and Kim Bella, they still together with their kids and all that shit. Kim Bella just got proposed to after 10 years and many cheating um, moons later. You know what I'm saying? Yuck mouth, muff mouth, meth mouth, crack mouth, opioid mouth, and all that stuff. Drug addiction. And she told us that basically, if you stick by a man long enough, they'll eventually come around and um, give you what you want, a marriage or whatever. Bitch, ain't nobody finna be standing around with somebody for 10 years in the game like that after all the cheating and all this stuff. Bitch, please. Okay? But oh, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. All right? So, and they talking about his whole situation that we all saw on the um, blogs and stuff about Jewel's. You know, he possibly going to jail, which 919 is going to happen because he brought a gun to the airport and then he ran away from the cops and he was on the run and all this shit. And I said, on the run, no Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, sorry, what the fuck was going on? He was like, well, let me tell you what was going on if you shut the fuck up. My name is Joel Santana, and I just wanted that you know that, you know, the whole thing with me that was going on about me getting caught up with a gun in the airport and running from the cops and said, it was the simple fact that, you know, I had went to the dentist and I had went and got my teeth fixed, you know what I'm saying? And then I had got addicted to the pain pills that they put me on, and so... They just had me out here wilding. I didn't know whether I was coming or going and everything. So I go to the airport, bitch. I didn't know I had a gun in the goddamn thing either until y'all showed it on the news said I had a gun up in there. Bitch, I was just sitting there like, boy, them teeth got your ass talking really lispy, okay? Got him sound like Chris Brown up in this bitch. <laughs> I say, yo, you know, I said, boy, what the fuck? All right, you know, these new teams, they need to file them down a little bit more. Okay, trust and believe. I understand I had to get my two filed down. When my shit got fucked up, you need to file them shits down because they are affecting your speech. But, okay, them S's are hitting really hard. And, um, you know, he was basically saying how he has to stay with his mom on house arrest or whatever because him and Kim Bella are not married. So, the whole thing is being away from the kids and all that stuff. And I was just like, this is a mess, okay? This is a mess. So, you know, <laughs> Safari gets to talking about how his whole show, you know, he about to go tear down and dike me. You know what I'm saying? He about to put it down. You know, he love performing all over New York and everything and showing the people what it is. And um, then they show a sharp contrast to what really happened. He said, you know, he sit there playing the whole video for us. We ain't seeing the video, but we hear the audio, okay? Of them booing him and Dykeman and then him saying, you know, uh, 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 all the bitches that you dream about fucking, I fuck them and all this stuff. I'm sitting here like, I wasn't here for him when he said that shit. I said, Safari, you funny, but you lame as shit, okay? And then gonna say something, I didn't expect it to catch on and get this viral and all that stuff. Why the fuck not, bitch? It's Dykeman, okay? And it's you, Clown City. Moving on from that, um, Kimbella goes over there. Did you see that scene? When the kids were sitting there and they were trying to show like Kim Bella, you know, she's really this all time good mom or whatever. I miss daddy. You miss daddy? Yeah, I miss daddy too. I said, girl, can you stop reading off the script and be for real, for real? Yeah, I miss that nigga. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You will see him. Okay. I'll run you over there to see him. You know, but he go over there. She go over there to his mama's house. 
Um, because that's where he's on house arrest. They having a little therapy session with some lady. And basically, he's talking about how he was addicted to lean because uh, it's the hip hop culture. He was addicted to the pills from when he got the dental work and he, all the stuff that he put Kim Bella through. And let me just tell you this. when At the time, it was nine years. OK, now it's 10 years because that's what she put on her Instagram post. But she was like, I put up with all the lies, the infidelities, you know, the disrespect. The drugs. What am I supposed... I said, bitch, you dumb. That's what the fuck... And you want us to feel sorry for you? This is a cautionary tale, ladies, okay? This is a caution... Mental, okay? Because some of y'all be sitting up here waiting for deadbeat-ass bitches and deadbeat-ass niggas, too, okay? Y'all really putting up with this bullshit for nine-plus years? Girl, please, okay? After fucking five, ain't shit changing. It's time to get the fuck up out of that bitch three, okay? Ain't shit changing. How many times do you have to let a m n nigga... Fuck around on you. That's one thing, okay? Like, uh, I don't give a fuck about... No, we stand for the kids. Fuck that, okay? It didn't work for Tara, all right? So it's not going to work for you. And the kids see that bullshit, and it's just not a good look. Moving on from that, um, this whole thing with Alexis. I didn't... I forgot that the bitch was going to be on this show, and I just didn't understand why, okay? We wasn't featuring her when she was on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta for that one season, and we thought we got rid of her then. Now we see that she's on this season. She's supposed to be a rapper, okay? I really don't give a shit about none of her storyline. I mean, it's sad what happened with her baby. It's a good thing that the baby, you know, came out of the with flying colors. You know, she said that she had to have four brain surgeries because the baby didn't ask to be brought in this world. Um, And that's an innocent life. And, you know, you shouldn't take life for granted. So I'm glad that the baby is okay. Um, you know, I didn't know that she, because I don't keep up with her. I don't follow her for what reason. Then she said she had seven blood transfusions. She had to have, um, emergency C-section at 23 weeks. We saw all this play out on the blogs or whatever. And she's supposed to be a rapper now. And now she's going to sign to Treyway. I said Treyway, Treyway. Is it the 6 9 shit? And then she said, I want to be the biggest rapper just like on some 6 9 shit. I said, bitch, he in jail. And he ain't gonna get out. Listen, six nine ain't six nine court date don't come up until January. It, it, it's, the court date is not until two thousand nineteen, and they got his ass staying in jail until then. Okay, that's what you want to be like. All right, you know, get them hits and false flag and all that stuff. Moving on from that, um, the the dude Navarro still on here as the lawyer. I said also oh, you the resident to lawyer for uh Love and Hip Hop New York. Okay, make your money, bitch. Um, you know, and the owner of Treyway or whatever, the CEO, they signed the papers. He talking to her about what's going on with her and Fetty Wap. You know, y'all got this personal situation. You're going to have to learn how to make it, um, separate the personal from the business. Y'all on the same label. So if he come in and y'all got to do some stuff or whatever, you're going to have to switch that shit off. She was like, I can't do that. Uh -uh, I can't do that because there's so much stuff that's underlying that we still got to figure out. I didn't have this baby. He not claiming it or nothing, claiming her or nothing. And I know he my baby daddy and all this shit. But it's like when I see that motherfucker, my blood just boils. And then Navarro comes in with Freddie Wop. Okay, he's like, I just want to say what's up and congratulations. She was like, you know what? I'm really about to uh, snap. I said, girl, you letting a nigga get to you like this? Okay. So Alexis is in her feelings. And basically, her and Fetty Wap has this whole conversation. The last time we met, you didn't do this. And you won't get a DNA test. And you don't know what it was like, you know, when I had uh the baby. And he was like, I was there. I was there. I know. I was there. I was there. Okay, so when you going to do that thing, I'm going to do the thing. I'm just leaving it up to you. Oh, so now you leaving it up to me? Treyway sitting there the whole time like this. Listen, you're going to have to learn to leave business with business and personal with personal, okay? Don't bring that shit up in here. And, um, you know, whatever with that scene. You get introduced to Mano, okay? Mano, he did a bid for like 10 years in jail, you know? He used to, he grew up in violence, okay? In violence. And, and, and you know, he grew up in the United Ghettos of America because he grew up and seen a lot of violence and participated in a lot of violence, you know what I'm saying? Um, ain't no O in the word, okay, when he said, ain't no O in the word. So, you know, he was performing at this show. He said, ain't nothing like being on stage. And then he was at this place. I forget what it was called, but I remember exactly what happened when T.I. and him was performing a couple of years ago. And it was a big thing because gunshots had let out and people got hurt. People got shot. I think somebody got killed then too. And they was in the green room. His girlfriend got shot. 
um, them pictures, bitch. She was posing for them pictures in that hospital bed and in that stretcher, okay? But whatever. You know, and she dealing with the psychological effects of it. She didn't come that night. Um, Joe Budden showed up to talk to him about it. Jaquay showed up. You, you know, he claimed he the new face of Sean John. Okay. <sighs> You know, get your coins how you going to get your coins, okay? And Joe basically talking about how, you know, the whole thing with Safari. He was like, Jaquay, you was with him, right? He said, yo, they was just booing and throwing bottles and shit. You know what I'm saying? It was like, what my man say? He was like, yo, you little motherfuckers, okay? I fucked the girls that y'all can only dream about. And that just went off. Mano said the shit, okay? Mano is not here to sugarcoat no shit. Bitch, let me just tell you something. Every time I see Mano now, all I see is when Lil' Kim was getting, um, what was it, a key to the city or something like that, and he jumped up trying to talk for her, trying to um talk before her, and kept on putting his arm around her, and she kept on looking all pissed off and everything. It's hilarious. You got to look up the video, okay? Lil' Kim just was not here for him that day. But um, anyway, he was saying, you up here putting out songs about how you got guns and all this stuff, but then the next thing you know, I see you on the radio and you're crying about getting jacked and all this shit. And he called that shit out about, you know, you got to pick a lane, okay? You got people out here. If you're going to be the corny dude, be the corny dude. If you're going to be the G, be the G, okay? Don't go back and forth because that shit's going to fucking catch up with your ass. And it was like, you got people out here portraying themselves as one thing and rapping about shit that they don't know nothing about. And then all of a sudden that shit catch up uh, with them. And then you're going to be sending your ass there crying, okay? you know i said you know what may know you right you right um joe budden talking about how he gotta go home and deal with sin because she a little nympho or whatever give her some dick then god damn shut her ass up <laughs> um so that was what happened with them i said okay this may know shit probably will be a little interesting um i hope so, you got Sin at her house, and Alexis is there. I said, since the fuck when? But, okay. And Kim Bella shows up, and, you know, they having some mommy time and all this shit, and Kim Bella talking about, you know, her shit going on with Joelle's and the kids, and then Alexis talking about her being on the label and Fatty and all this shit. And Sin basically talking about, Sin whole storyline, this whole episode was about the lack of dick that she ain't, that she's not getting, Okay. Um, the lack of dick that she's getting, okay, and, um, at this point in time, I'm already over it, okay, I'm like, Joe, give her some dick so she can just shut the fuck up, dig her down, like Kim Bella said, I mean, you know, borderline sexual harassment, you know, that's what it will sound like, sexual assault a little bit, when she said, just pull his dick out and do what you gotta do, you know, you can't do that, but, I mean, you can, but you can't, but you can, you know, we in the Me Too era, but, you know, I get it. It is what it is. At this point, what else do she got to lose? Okay, because he ain't doing it. You might as well take control because she ain't doing it. You know, moving on from that, bitch, why they up there talking? Safari rose up because Joe said he reached out to him trying to get some advice and all this shit about what happened at Dykeman. And Joe put that shit on him like, you know, you up here, what happened? He was like, I basically said I fuck bitches that y'all only dream of. You know, I wasn't being rude. They just start throwing shit and everything. And it's like, I'm not a rude dude. Ain't nothing, um, you know, rude or violent up in my songs. He was like, but yes, it is. In that song, you said if I nigga get robbed, I'm just going to pull out the nine and pop, 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 tat, tat, tat. And then your ass get robbed and you didn't pull out no nine or nothing. You got on the radio crying. Okay, and it was like, you can't keep moving corny, you a good dude, but you can't keep moving corny like this, and then you putting out a song called Dykeman and all this shit, no, bro, he just told him you need to stop it, and then that motherfucker said he went and brought the jury two weeks later, okay, I said, you know what, Safari, we try with you. But everything that Joe was telling your ass was 100, no matter how you feel about Joe Budden, what he was telling Safari was 100% real, okay? That was some fucking facts, okay? He just needs to move better. And like he said, the song that you was um, singing and rapping or whatever and going all over the country, your audience predominantly is women, okay? You need to cater to your audience, all right? Why go to a freaking basketball game, Dykeman, renowned, known place, okay? Everybody knows Dykeman, all right? If you seen the show, um, the movie that just came out, Uncle Drew, they was talking about the pickup games at Dykeman, you know what I'm saying? Um, so... You know, you, you, you got to go to your audience. Niggas don't want to hear that shit. Like, come on, come on, come on. So far, you got to do better. 
So, you know, Joe was at his podcast, a live taping, saying, which jumps up and, um, you know, says, am I the best relationship that uh, you ever had? And he talking about how much he in love with her, whatever. When old dude said, dude, you dressed like a drug dealer from the 80s. Joe was dressed in his little, uh, what was it, a Gucci, a.k.a. Adidas tracksuit or whatever. Listen, Joe, when he was standing there with um, Mano and Jaquise, uh, he looked like he was their granddaddy, okay? A sophisticated-ass granddaddy who know how to dress, okay? You know, that's what he looked like. He looked like a grown man, you know? A grown, grown man. I ain't saying he looked bad. He actually is... He looked decent. He looked good in the shit that he... Be, oh, I'm giving Joe all these goddamn compliments. I ain't never complimented this nigga that much in my goddamn life. But, you know, I did say I might turn out to like this motherfucker this season. But, you know, singing in the car with him... Uh, she got her little titties out. He trying to close them up. And she was like, uh-uh, you see anything different? You smell anything? And then it was like, Joe, come on, you smell anything? I got a new perfume and everything. And he starts sniffing. Then she's put his head between her titties, motorboat them motherfuckers. I would have did the same thing, you know, but that's just me. And, you know, she talking about something so... The kids are over there at home with my mom, and my mom is over there, you know, babysitting them. So, I was thinking, like, you know, we can just go ahead and get this beautiful hotel since we still up in the city, and we get this hotel, and we can just fuck. You know what I'm saying? Let's just go ahead and fuck, okay? He was like, I want to do that at home. And she said, no, because if we do it at home, you're going to go to sleep, okay? And I'm not trying to go to sleep, okay? I want some goddamn dick, bitch. I said, sin, you know, at this point, just take them right... Nope, that don't sound right. You, I was like, y'all could have fucked in the car right then and there. Just like, what? You don't want none of this? You don't want these titties, okay? Because listen, she will fuck, she will fuck, he will fuck, the driver will fuck, you know, everybody will fuck. I said, Joe, you better be careful because Erica Mina is somewhere watching. You know, she dickless and pussless right about now. And she'll fuck around and take sin, okay? You know, she gonna pop up and be like, bitch. What your man won't do, I can't. You know what I'm saying? You better stop fucking playing because that bitch would have been took her down, okay? We seen how she worked. And um, she was like, well, since you gonna go home, because he said, take me to Jersey. You gonna go home. Well, bitch, get me out this car. I'm going back to the hotel. They get out the car. They talking. She was like, basically, I'm still trying to get adjusted to my new body because she has gained a little bit away from the baby and all this stuff. And it's a self-esteem thing and it's an ego thing and it's a, you know, trying to feel like herself again. And like she said... You don't make me feel sexy when it's when you're not showing that you're into me sexually like that. And I'm trying to get adjusted to this new body and things like that. So the stuff, even though it may sound like Sin is being a little bit immature, which she is on a little bit, but she states some real shit that a lot of women go through after they have their um kids. They get the body always changes and you feel a little bit different. You uh, feel a little bit insecure. And so, you know, when she said you sing your citizen dick. I like to die. And she got in that cab and drove the fuck off. I said, well, <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> so the episode ends with Kim Bella and Jewels. They're going to take the kids out to play. The um, lawyer, well, actually the judge had, um, you know, granted him time to go play with his kids. Um, and then while they in the park playing, I just want Kim Bella to wear shit that actually fit her, Okay. You know, like, ain't nothing wrong with being thick. It was okay. I like them thick. You know, it is what it is, you know. Ain't nothing wrong with a nice little ass and little titties or whatever, whatever. But with some shit that can fit your ass, okay? That's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say. You're a healthy girl, okay? Ugh. Anyway, Jewels get a phone call. And then he was like, right now? Oh, okay. So he was like, I went and got my lawyer. He called me and so... You know, it's a decision that I got to make on this case right now. I said, bitch, what? <laughs> Run that back. It's a decision. Move your tongue back, okay? He can't. He can't help it. But um, basically, he has to, um, they moving along with the case. And he has to decide whether or not he's going to take the go to trial and take a plea deal. Or, you know, um, if he don't take the plea deal, he can possibly go to trial and then they can um, give him five years. And with the plea deal, he get 18 to 24 months. And so, Kim Bella, she's just in her feelings about it. I mean, you had to go talk to Yandy because she's been through the same thing. And I'm not even saying that as a joke. Um, but, you know, don't nobody want to go through that. But this is the life that you chose to keep up with. Okay? I'm just fucking saying. 
I'm just saying. And that was the end of the uh, first episode. It was cute for what it was. I guess this week we're going to get introduced to everybody else, okay? Because, you know, Mona got like 15,000 cast members in one season all the time, okay? But um, y'all tell me how y'all like this opening. Um, and I will see you guys later. Peace.